A reading from the Gospel of Luke. Jesus said, I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies. Do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. If you have been coming along on Sunday mornings over the years that I've had the privilege of being Dean of St James, there will be some times when you've heard me encouraging you and all our congregation, all our church family, to come along to important midweek services. You'll find I get fairly passionate about attendance at the great celebrations of Holy Week on Monday, Thursday and Good Friday and Holy Saturday. And I stand there and I try and make it as plain as I possibly can that I absolutely believe that it is the duty of Christian churchgoers, Christian disciples, to observe these great days of the Christian year. And I stand there and I say it, and I know that there is a reality that not everyone will come. And to be honest, some of the people who won't come don't, in my humble opinion, necessarily have a very good reason for that. And I sometimes joke when I'm making these kind of announcements that I wish it was nice and straightforward and I could say, if you don't come to church when I tell you, well, you'll burn in hell. It would be very easy if I believed in a God like that. And I fear that there are Christians who do sort of believe in a God like that, which rather worries and shocks me. But the hard truth is that while I do think it is part of Christian commitment and discipleship to take church attendance seriously, I also know that God loves each one of us, you, me and everyone else, irrespective of whether we go to church on Good Friday or anything else that we do. God's love is not conditional, which is a real challenge, isn't it? Because when we lend, we do expect to be repaid. And indeed, there are plenty of strands in the Bible which imply that it's utterly appropriate when you can to repay a debt. That's what a debt is. But the point is that if you don't repay a debt, whilst both the world and perhaps God might say that's not appropriate behaviour, it doesn't put anyone outside God's absolutely unconditional and inclusive love. And that becomes a challenge because we, the church, are the body of Christ. We are called to be Christ-like in our thoughts, in our deeds, in our words, in all our being. Which means that we have to try and model and demonstrate to those around us the true nature of God's love so supremely revealed in Christ, whose arms outstretched on the cross signal that love to everyone. It's really not an easy thing to do. I know that myself very, very clearly uh, when I look at the inadequacy of my own attempts to love, especially those whom I find rather unlovable. But the more we do inhabit 
the mind of Christ, the actions and the words of Christ, the love of Christ, the more we can make that happen, the more we will discover what Jesus was really talking about with that abundant, overflowing measure of good things that will be pressed down into our lap. It's quite a challenge, and I say that most principally to myself, but it's the path of true joy, and I hope we can walk it with Christ. Amen.